moment of silent reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who have died during the past weeks. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Lawson? Here. Mr. Vaughn? Here. Mr. McGaugh? Here. <clears throat> Dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order. Third order, 3A. Controller's report for the month ending November 30th, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, applications along with decisions rendered by the Zoning Hearing Board on Wednesday, December 11th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, agenda for the Zoning Hearing Board meeting held January 8th, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Clerk's notes, Mrs. Reed. Um, Mr. McGough, thank you. Uh, today, a check was submitted to our office uh, from the FOP in the amount of $500, and it will be deposited to the Public Safety Manpower Donations Account, and it was hand-delivered to the BA's office. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, on the agenda this evening, the beginning of the agenda there are a number of um, ordinances. All of them, uh, the, the first few, are dealing with budget items. Uh, these are items that were approved in last year's budget um, by last year's council. Uh, there are no changes in these from what was approved by the 2013 council. Uh, these are, as were, presented in the budget last year. Uh, then there are a number of appointments that are on the agenda. Uh, we have decided that we are going to continue the policy that was begun by, um, last, by the last council in asking for uh, either letters of um, intent or um, brief resumes for anyone that is being appointed to a position so uh, we will be asking if these people would do that for us uh, so that we have an idea of uh, basically who it is that we're voting for in, in these positions uh, most many of the people we do know some we don't and it would just give more credibility to our vote if uh, we had those in our possession and then finally on the agenda, 5T is a, uh, a resolution dealing with the um, Goodwill Project in North Scranton. And it, it, it's asking us to basically change um, some of the lending lenders, I, I guess would be better, uh, for a grant that was, or a loan that was in grant that were approved sometime back in 2006, if I'm not mistaken. But th this it would allow for the Goodwill Project in North Scranton to begin, and it's under an emergency certificate because there is some urgency because of the changing of lenders that um, needs to be um, taken care of uh, in a timely fashion. And uh, Mrs. Abley and Attorney Hickey are here from OECD uh, to answer any question that anybody might have about this project. So I'm going to suspend the rules a little bit. And if anyone has any questions for them pertaining to this legislation, um, I would ask if they would, you know, just come to the podium now so that, because uh, 
they do have to leave and um, so if you have any questions please just come to the podium and they would be they're here to answer those questions thank you Marie Schumacher, taxpayer. Uh, yes, uh, during the caucus, there were several terms turned, uh, thrown around. One was grant, that this is being converted to a grant. And then uh, I believe Mr. Hickey said that it, was, it would remain a loan. Uh, just for the record, uh, what was the interest rate on the prior loan and the terms? And what is the interest rate and term on the current loan? Please. I believe the, the initial interest rate was zero. It hasn't changed. All right. It's just a repayment of the $700,000 that was previously loaned back in 2006. The city has a first mortgage, as I indicated, in caucus. And all that's really happening here is the city is going to take a second lien position during construction. And then once construction's over, permanent financing goes into place, the city's first lien position will resume. And then on top of that, a second mortgage is being filed against the leasehold interest because it's the tenant that's actually going to be making the improvements to the property. I'm Tom Ungvarsky. Can someone tell me why we are giving up first right to the mortgage and becoming subsidiary to it? <laughs> Attorney Hickey will. Yeah, I, I, I can respond. explain that. The, you can sit here if you have That's more questions. Right. The, the, the issue with the giving up the first position was in order for Goodwill to obtain their construction financing and their permanent financing, the construction lender made that one of the requirements in order for the construction lender to provide the loan to Goodwill for the purposes of making the improvements. And this is not an uncommon occurrence with, with regard to projects that are funded somewhat with municipal dollars. Uh, actually, a lot of times you'll see where the city is taking a third, fourth, or even fifth position with regard to that. The nice part of this is we were able to get them to agree to put us back in a first position once the construction's done and their permanent financing is, is in place. And again, I think we said it in caucus, that's a roughly a 24-month maximum period in order for that to happen. I believe when this project was first started, we gave them $2 million, which they promptly spent on fixing up the exterior of the building. Several years later, they came back and looked for another grant, I believe, to fix the roof. At that time, I think they promised they would have at least one apartment ready for occupancy by the first of the year. And they haven't even started on it. Does anyone know why they haven't or when they will? The, the date that they gave us for that they would like to begin, um, hopefully in February of 2014, to put things in place to begin the, to complete the, pro begin and complete the project. Well, a year ago, they promised they would have apartments ready by now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anvarsky. Bill Jackwitz, uh, my question is, uh, how many years have we been dealing with goodwill on this North Scranton High School? How many loans, how many grants have they gotten during this extended period of time? And to the best of my knowledge, when I just drove by there, nothing has actually been done. The windows are still broken. I mean, the, the front of the building doesn't look bad, but if you go around the sides or the back, it looks terrible. So my question is, when does their credibility end? I mean, the taxpayers are paying for this. 
with either city tax money or state tax money. And they've come to this council and this city and the taxpayers many years and many times. When will it end? Anyone else? Um, thank you, Mrs. Abel. This is just on 5T, Mr. Morgan. Okay. Uh, Attorney Hickey, Mrs. Abley, thank you very much. Thank you. Mrs. Reed? Oui. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Thank you. First speaker, Bill Jackowitz. Good evening, Scranton City Council. Welcome back. Uh, first of all, I'd like to start off by thanking all the people who uh, sent me uh, get well cards and telephone calls and all the people I've met throughout the city who have approached me and asked me how I'm doing and, and wish me the best. So I'd like to thank all those people. There's too many to name because I know I'd forget some names, so I don't want to offend anybody. Uh, Secondly, uh, I'd like to wish the new City Council good luck because you're going to need it. I'd also like to wish the Mayor Courtright good luck because he's going to need, need it and all the appoint appointees who have been appointed to the administrative positions and becoming department heads. There's a lot of work that has to be done. I promised a friend of mine that I would not mention that the city has been distressed for <laughs> 8,012 days, so to my friend, uh, I guess I broke my promise. But anyway, uh, we need to really get serious, gentlemen. I mean, the time has come. The city needs to get serious. You all, you five people have been elected to govern the city legislatively. And I know for one person, I I'm going to be watching you. And I hope you do the best. I hope the politics stops, the political games, because this city, I mean, maybe people don't realize it, but the city's in deep trouble. Like we would say in Korea, we're in deep kimchi, okay? So let's all work together. Let's work with the mayor. I know everybody says they're going to do that, but let's actually do it, okay? Let's get it started. I mean, let's work together. Let's sit down and really take our time to, to really concentrate on the problems that this city has. I mean, uh, the city is well known throughout the country, but for most part, not for good things. As a matter of fact, my, my nephew lives in Australia, and he called me up and told me that we were in the news in Australia a couple of times in the last couple of years. So, I mean, that we need, that it needs to stop. We need to work together. Uh, it's going to be a difficult job. It's going to be a hard job. I'm probably not going to agree with you on everything. More than likely, I'm going to disagree with you more than I agree with you. But anyway, as long as you're being honest, being straightforward, I can't speak for anybody else, I can only speak for myself. I'm a man, I'm an adult, I can handle adversity. I can handle the truth. And that's all I want to hear. I want to hear the truth of what's going on. I would love to know how much money the city is actually in debt. I've heard so many different figures throughout the years that I have no idea how much money the city's in debt. I would really love to know where's the money being spent and how's it being spent. Again. I've heard so many different stories that I don't really know. And I know I'm not the only person that feels that this way in the city of Scranton. So, I mean, I'm going to support you. I might yell at you. I might argue with you. But I'm going to support you as long as I feel you're doing the right thing. And I'm sure that most of the citizens in the city of Scranton feel the same way that I do. We're getting a new start. It's 2014. We got a new mayor. We got uh, uh, two new council members. Uh, we, we got a chance. I mean, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be very difficult. But I would really like to find out, like, where's the money all going to come from? How are we going to get the money? You know, Mayor, Mayor Cartwright stated that we all have to come together and we all have to, get, to give. Well, you know, he real, you know, the citizens and the taxpayers have already done that. They observed a 56% tax increase and a 69% garbage fee increase. So the citizens and the taxpayers have already done that. They have come together and they have given. 
So now we need the mayor, city council, and the administration, and all the department heads to do the same thing. They need to come together, and they need to give, and they really need to work on making Scranton a better place to live, party at, and play, and worship. And thank you. Thank you. Gerard Hetman. Gerard Hetman. Good evening, City Council. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Gerard Hetman from the Lackawanna County Department of Community Relations. Uh, as I look at the dais tonight, I see three familiar faces. Uh, I've worked with uh, the three returning councilmen for the last two years in this capacity. Uh, but for our two new council members and for the general purposes of reorganization, uh, please just allow me to offer a brief overview of myself and what I do. As I said, I work for Lackawanna County's Community Relations Department. We work on behalf of the Lackawanna County Commissioners, Corey O'Brien, Jim Wanzak, and Patrick O'Malley, as basically a community outreach and constituent service staff. Uh, the work that we do is the way I explain it, uh, very similar to what the district staff would do for a state representative, a state senator, U.S. congressman, or a U.S. senator. Uh, we go out to the community work with citizens and businesses and elected officials on behalf of the commissioners uh, to try to make county services and programs accessible uh, to every resident in Lackawanna County. A uh, key part of our outreach is attending municipal meetings for all elected <coughs> officials, bodies in Lackawanna County, school boards, borough councils, and of course uh, city councils, including Scranton. Uh, so typically I come to the third meeting of the month on the third Thursday of the month uh, for Scranton City Council. Uh, if, you ha if I have a conflict with my schedule or if council doesn't meet during the third Thursday, I typically come to the fourth Thursday. Uh, the first two weeks I attend other municipal meetings in other municipalities that I'm assigned to. Uh, but I'm here to work with you. And over the last two years, I've enjoyed great cooperation uh, from the five council members that were present during that time. And uh, for each of the three returning members, I believe I've worked well with you. Uh, and our two new members, looking forward to working with you. I'm your link to county government, and any questions or suggestions you have, any issues that you'd like to work with the commissioners or any other county department or agency on, I can help you access that. And I'm here to, again to represent the commissioners to city government, and I'm uh, looking forward to working with all five of you, as well as your staff and all the residents of the city of Scranton. Uh, on that note, we just have a couple of items, and typically for the new members, I do speak about the new programs and initiatives that the commissioners launch from month to month when I visit. Uh, the first one was unveiled yesterday at the Commissioner's Monthly Meeting, uh, which is called the Lackawanna County Code Blue uh, Weather Awareness Initiative. Uh, the Code Blue program is a public outreach initiative designed to raise awareness of the dangers of freezing weather uh, to personal health, as well as to pets and personal property for residents and visitors to Lackawanna County. Uh, whenever the temperature, including wind chill, is expected to go below 20 degrees Fahrenheit, for a period of more than a few hours, uh, typically a day or more. In conjunction with the Lackawanna County Emergency Management Agency, the commissioners issue a code blue advisory uh, through the media channels and also county social media and website. And we can also send it to all the elected officials uh, so that your departments in government are aware of this. Uh, it's very simply an outreach initiative designed to share information through the county website, number one. Uh, we've got a whole collection of links and uh, you know different multimedia from public safety agencies designed to keep people safe, give them tips and information about how to stay safe in cold weather. And then secondly, we've partnered with the three shelters in the city of Scranton that take in uh, residents who may be homeless during the cold weather, and most of them do it year round. Uh, but St. Anthony's Haven on Wyoming Avenue, and also the Bethel AME shelter on Washington Avenue are both overnight. And then Community Intervention Center um, is the daytime shelter over on 6th Avenue. We've talked to all three of them, and all three of those institutions have partnered with us in agreeing to uh, raise their level of awareness a little bit when the cold weather hits. And all of their contact information is accessible, again, on the county website. We'll have an icon on there. It's going to be blue when cold weather alerts in effect, and it's green otherwise. Uh, so the information is available for advanced planning. But all the shelter's contact information, address, and their hours of operation are on there. And I believe I speak for all of us when we know the, the homeless residents in the city and the area aren't always cast away. They're among us in the community. Uh, they're our friends, sometimes they're our neighbors, they're people we know and see every day. And when the cold weather hits, we want to make sure they have a safe place to go. Uh, the commissioners have modeled this after code blue programs in other counties, uh, notably Bucks County, Montgomery County, and the city of Philadelphia. And I uh, look forward to putting it into place Hopefully we won't have too much cold weather, but when it hits, uh, we want to make sure everybody knows where to go and what to do. And then the second item that we have uh, is that the 
Lackawanna County Courthouse is one of the locations open for prescription drug take back, uh, meaning that there's a container there as part of the Healthy PA initiative. Uh, anyone can drop off prescription, unused prescription medications there between on Monday through Friday, uh, between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 4 o'clock p.m. And there's a container, uh, you just go, go up and see the deputies and you can deposit any unused prescription medication that may be laying around your house, again, during business hours, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. And uh, it's there for residents' use. Uh, so thank you, gentlemen of council, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hepman. Les Spindler. <coughs> Good evening, Council Les Spindler, City Resident, Homeowner, Taxpayer. Good evening. I too would like to welcome tech, the Council back and welcome the, the new Council people. And uh, as I'm going to be a little repetitive of what, 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 what Mr. Jackowitz said, uh, you have a daunting task ahead of you, but you have to work with the Mayor, unlike what's happened the last 12 years. For the first eight years, Mayor Doherty had his rubber stamp Council of which our esteemed president was part of for a while. And uh, the last four years, I thought we had a really good council, which the mayor wouldn't get along with. So for anything to get done, this council has to get along with the mayor. I think Mayor Courtright's going to do a fantastic job. And in his little time office, I think he's shown some good things already. He, they, the city has hired a consultant, which the city is not paying for, which unlike in the past where our former mayor, which I can't even say his name anymore because I get ill when I talk about him. Uh, he hired consultants costing the city hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now the Chamber of Commerce is paying for this consultant who, who has a past history of helping other cities out of the situation that we're in. So uh, hopefully he's going to do a good job. And uh, Mr. Courtright's uh, business administrator, I worked with him for a very long time at a local uh, local bank, very, very qualified person. He worked in business banking for years. It's a great hire. Again, unlike the past administration with unqualified people. So uh, I hope this council works with the mayor. And, uh, you, you have to. There's no trick because I think he's going to do a great job. This council could go down to history maybe of start turning this city around from where it is now because we're in dire straits as everybody knows. And uh, one thing I don't like, I think Councilman Rogan deserved to be president. He was the people's choice. He had more votes than anybody. He had more votes than the mayor. And uh, I think a deal was made so Mr. McGough could be president. But uh, you can deny it all you want, Mr. McGough, but I know what happened. I appreciate, I appreciate the comments, Mr. Spindler. I'm, I'm just happy being on the board, though. Well, I know you've done a great job in the past. And Thank I, you. I know you'll do a great job now. You've always been a, a, a person that's for the taxpayers. Thank you. And uh, like I said, council has to work with the mayor. And if you don't, the last other council people that haven't worked with the mayor and haven't liked what uh, have what the, the taxpayers don't like what they've done, they got voted out. So, uh, moving on, the Goodwill project. Something has to be done with that. I mean, that school is going to de de deteriorate if it's not done now. And I've known Mr. Langham for most of my life. And he said, if, if this doesn't go through now, this is it. He gives up. And I can't blame him. He's been trying to fix that building up for years. And uh, I think. If the city can help out and really get that project going, I think we have to. Because I, th I think that would be a, a great start to turning this city around. It's a beautiful building. And if it's, you know, if it's refurbished the way Goodwill wants to do it, I, I, I think it'll be a great asset for the city. And uh, I guess that's what I'd like to say tonight. And good luck to council. And uh, as I said, please work with the mayor. Cause that, the taxpayers need it. And uh, I know it's a long way off. Maybe in next year's budget, we can cut taxes and cut the garbage fee. <laughs> because, uh, like I said, there's some people in this city just that cannot afford it, and especially the garbage tax. But uh, I'll be back again.
Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Spindler. Um, anyone else who wishes to address council? Good evening, Council. Marie Schumacher, welcome back, and uh, all the best for all of our success. Good evening. Uh, first, uh, and I think the most important item, is the uh, loan status for the TAN. Early last year, or last month, it was stated by uh, Mr. Judge of CaseCon that the uh, closing date of a, a TAN, uh, $17 million, I believe, was to be around the 3rd of January. I have heard or seen nothing. Uh, that's rather important to the city. Uh, what is the status of that TAN, and is CaseCon being retained, or are they going to be replaced? Um, I, I don't. I thought that the papers for the TAN were signed prior to Mayor Doherty leaving. Um, I have not, I've been a little bit out of the loop, so I'm, uh, I'm not sure what the status of that is, but we will find out. Yeah, I, I would hope I, you'd I all want to know else. whether we have that 17 million. I was under the impression now. that everything was taken care of. That's why the city paid the, um, into the pension fund early to avoid the additional penalties. Um, I know from meeting with Pell previous to this year, um, that the city was waiting to be sure that the TAN would be finalized in order to meet the payroll that's today. Right. But I, I would like to know if oh, it was absolutely. executed, if yeah. that was actually executed. We'll get so maybe next week you could, you could do that, yes. Uh, now, um, Mr. McGough, you stated that nothing in the agenda had changed from what the prior council had approved, but um, I look at 5P, and the budget says we will have a fire chief and on 5P, it says we are going to have an acting fire chief. And that's, that's, a, that's a, an, an issue for me. We were told our budget includes a fire chief. Why is this only a temporary appointment or what? I, I, I don't know the reason for the word acting. Um, when I said there were no changes, I, I, I don't think that that's a fundamental change. Um, it, it, it is to me. I would, I, as a matter of fact, enough that I would ask that you hold up on, on voting on this tonight until you have the answer on why and the circumstances and make sure that this job is in compliance with the budget from last year. Uh, and the rental registration program. Uh, I know uh, one of the two people who was working on that has taken another position, and uh, is that effort now being reduced to a single person, or are, has there been another appointment, or will there be another hire for to keep that? That at position, two? I'm sorry, that position is still in the budget, but it is a, I believe it is a union position, so therefore it would have to be go through the, the bidding process in order to be filled. So it's curr currently there's one person. And I, I'm, I'm hoping that, yes, currently there is one person. I don't think that that position has been filled as of yet. And in again, a, in addition, um, regarding the rental registration, I know one of the amendments that we were trying to push was for the um, extra person in the business administrator's office that would oversee um, the rental registration. I, I spoke to the mayor earlier in the week. Um, and he indicated that he is still trying to work with DCD to obtain that grant um, for that position that would much of the focus would be on um, maximizing the rental registration program. Okay, thank you. Um, and then another question that I asked last year that never got answered, but I would hope that you could get the answer. Maybe, maybe now would be a good time to ask. Can you tell me what the assignments are for the members of council? Who has finance? Who has uh, public works? Who has public safety? Yes. Uh, Thank you. Public works, public safety, community development, finance. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. There's there was a half a million dollar <laughs> increase for the tax collector committee, and I'd ask what those expenses were for, and I would really like to know 
how that half a million dollars in addition that was put in for this year's budget for that committee, that Act 32 committee, what that is going to provide. Um, when, uh, oh, just a, a public service kind of thing, a suggestion to property owners uh, living on the top of a hill. Uh, I, I travel up and down and I see a lot of a lot of water runoff and a lot of it going across the roads that freezes at night and causes uh, problems in the morning is that the sewer grates or the stormwater grates are covered over with leaves yet from the fall. So I would just urge anybody who is a property owner has a grate in front of their home and has the ability physically to clear those off, that would really be helpful and allow the storm water to go into the drains instead of across the road and freeze and cause problems. Uh, now, a little bit more back on the budget. Uh, last year, uh, Mr. Hickey was here speaking on behalf of Merrillette Courtright, uh, Courtright's transition team on whether or not the 2014 budget was realistic. Uh, so there are a few more questions that I had last year again that weren't answered. The $1.7 million sale of a city asset, I would like to know what that is and is it a straight out sale or is it a sale lease back? Um, maybe by next week uh, you could have that answer or you know now? I believe that was Pell agreed to put that, that that would be allowed to be put into the budget without a specific sale agreement. Do we even have a clue? So there is, as far as I know, at this point in time, there is not a specific item that is being sold. Mm, shame on Pell. Okay. Uh, earned income tax. There was some discussion last year on whether or not the spike in 2013 was due to the Act 32 full implementation or whether it was something that was going to continue. Uh, I would like to know whether or not we will be able to tell with the first Berkheimer payment the comparison of that to last year's on whether or not last year was a spike or whether we can expect higher revenues this year from the earned income tax. Let's see. Hopefully. Maybe, maybe Mr. Wexler could check that and run that one out. That would be helpful. Um, I do have, and I would like to ask, if I may, directly, there are two new members on whether or not they believe, because I know how the other three of you voted, uh, whether or not you believe it's realistic to expect that the property taxes will be collected at the same rate in 2014 with the 56.7% increase as it was last year. Uh, I'm not really sure about that, to be completely honest with you. I would hope so, um, but some people don't have the ability to pay now, um, so I would expect maybe there would be a little bit of a drop off. Okay. I would anticipate that the, the new mayor and the new business administrator uh, will be successful in collecting at least the same amount that they did last year. Uh, I think, as Bill mentioned, I think it'll be a problem in terms of um, some hardships, and um, we'll have to take it as we go. Okay. Um, come back with the rest next week as usual. Good Lord willing. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Mr. Schumacher. One thing to add, and you, you brought up about the tax collections coming in, um, and Mr. McGough just informed me earlier, one of the things that um, I know I pushed for last year and the year before was to extend the discount period um, for residents to pay their taxes. Uh, Mr. McGough just informed me that the tax collector, Bill Fox, um, has agreed to go along with it. I know the county commissioners have. And I believe the school board as well. So it seems that the discount period will be extended this year, um, which will give seniors, mostly seniors and people who own their homes outright, um, a little bit more time to get in with, with that discounted rate. Okay. Good evening, council. Um, Good evening. The first thing I have here is um, 
Well, personally speaking for myself, I think that Mr. McGough is an excellent uh, choice for uh, council president, even though in the future I may seriously disagree with him many times. <laughs> um, the first thing I have here is um, the North Scranton Junior High School Project emergency certificate. I think we should table that today. I think we really need to take a look at the amount of money we've spent on that project and where that money's gone to. Now, when Mr. McDade gave them $3 million initially to start off with, and then all the other millions that went into that project, I'm just wondering, are we squandering tax money and just throwing it into an open pit? I think we've got a lot of problems in the city, and I really think we need to research how much money we've spent there and how it all of a sudden today became an emergency. I think there's a lot of questions that need to be answered on that. And the other thing I have is, I don't know if it's true or not, um, but the uh, mall has fired its management team. Has anybody on council heard that? Okay, well, if that's true, then I'd say that the mall's in very serious trouble. And I think that if that has happened, maybe it's time to abolish the mercantile tax, which will put a hole in the budget. But if you want a city that's vibrant and capable of making a return to some semblance of uh, prosperity, we need to give the merchants in this community an opportunity to recover, not only from a very long recession, but from a city that has lost most of its population, okay, over the ensuing 80 years, an awful lot of its middle class has disappeared, and a lot of really, we're in really a real mess here. And, and I think that we have to start thinking in a new way, and we're gonna create a couple holes in the budget, but can we afford to allow this mall to collapse? And I'm really saying that this mall is very close to collapse. We've lost one of its anchors, and we need to start really considering how we're going to turn this city around. Now, I'm troubled that the chamber has come forward and helped the city get hiring a consultant because I'm just wondering why can't Scranton's elected officials find the solutions to our problems? I mean, they've got the help of the PEL. We've got the legislators that can come in here and give us help, and we, and we can't even put our own budgets together anymore. I just don't understand how we can elect people that don't have a real grasp of reality of what's taking place in this city. And when I see that the city has, the Chamber of Commerce is gonna give the city a consultant, it reminds me of the Jerry Cooney, Ken Norton fight. It lasted 30 seconds, Ken Norton got knocked out by Jerry Cooney, and everybody hyped it up as a great fight. And what I'm saying in regards to that is, we've hyped up this election process as if we, we've had candidates who ran for office and claimed that they had solutions. And if we go to a consultant, where are we? Why are we electing people? I just don't understand that. I mean, you know, we've got to stop borrowing money um, we just have so many problems that, you know, it's, it's hard to comprehend where the city is going to go. I mean, we have to really take a good hard look at what we're trying to do. I'm, I'm just thinking that, um, you know, if the mall collapses, where are we going to go? I think the first step this mayor should take is implementation of the Scranton Abington Planning Association's comprehensive plan. I think SAPA would be the greatest possible thing that this council and this mayor can do for this city because we need economic development and we need a change in direction. And we just don't seem to have that. And I think that we've got to start looking in a new way. And for people to talk about shared sacrifice after 20 years in distressed status, this city, and Mr. Gahan, I think you, you might have hit something here when you said that you think that this year tax revenue may be less. Because I really believe that the residents of this city have given all they have and there's nothing left. And these grand tax increases and all these other things, yes, we have a debt that we have to finance. But maybe it's really time to consider that this monster is just too big for us to handle. And all across the country, they're watching Scranton and they think we're going to collapse. Are we? Thank you.
Thank you. Good evening, Dave Dobson. Good evening. Back again, just like bad news that don't go away. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, as far as anything on five, I'll read through it and see if I have any comments next week. But uh, I had a question that popped into my mind last year, and it's about the PPNL trans lines at Nayog Park. Now, back in the 90s, I was driving by it, and I seen they were installing all kinds of uh, new transmission lines, high tension lines, right through the east side of Nayog Park between the brook and the highway. And uh, the thought occurred to me when, uh, when the uh, Verizon or whatever the person the representing that phone company came was offering rent. Now this goes right through a prime choice since the bridge was built over the brook, prime land in Nayog Park. And by the way, there's also two Nayog Parks. If you go to the end of uh, Elmhurst Boulevard right below the lookout, there will be a monument just before you can turn right or left. And that's to the donors of, uh, there's about 40 acres up there that have been, we've been deprived of since uh, the highway came through. So I would like to find out if the PPNL is renting space out of Nayog Park. And if they aren't, they really should start. It's time. Uh, now, I've read in a paper about a sewer plant sale. I'd also like to know if the unions have ever been approached with the new administration about an attempt for time payments. Uh, I would caution on sewer plant sales and any type of asset sales where your house could be condemned if you're unable to pay the bill. Once you get a corporation involved, you're going to pile 30, 40 percent overhead and profits on top of the original cost of replacing the equipment. So it's uh, apples and oranges and uh, depends on what you like. And uh, in reality, like uh, health insurance, uh, nonprofit health insurance is about 400 a month from Blue Cross. Well, if you try to go on COBRA with that in there or something, it's five and a quarter, 550. So once you get a corporation involved, there's going to be profit margins and there's going to be overhead and CEOs and who knows. Okay, uh, recycle. I have a printout here. I've given this before and I might mention in my uh, neighborhood, the recycling hat wasn't picked up two weeks in a row. Now, uh, the week before last, we had a nasty snowstorm. So that's in South Side between Willow and uh, Alder Street up on the Upper Side. Uh, I didn't even bother putting it out, but now my neighbor complained that uh, he, his recycling wasn't taken. And I didn't put mine out because I didn't have a full bucket anyway. Um, okay. Uh, also, a few, quite a while ago, we've went out a fire truck. And that concerns me that another town is benefiting from low taxes, possibly, or whatever, and uh, it's lent out to Throop, and, and it's our equipment. It'd be nice if they decided they wanted to buy it, if they throw us a couple bucks for it, if we're not ever going to use it. And if we really need it, I, it's my understanding, it never came back. And it's been about a year now, or since I've known about it, who knows how long it's been. And once again, trade packs and merchants. Uh, we have several stores closing downtown. Gallucci's is closing, the music store. Uh, they had excellent repair work. Uh, 
and customizing work and music lessons. They're moving to Taylor. And uh, it's just a shame with the mall and everything else. These merchants and everybody out there has to start facing the facts. Trade packs are killing the working class in this country. And if it does not stop, there really isn't very much hope. It's just a shame. But every time they, right now we have uh, the Trans-Pacific Pact, and uh, you get cited a couple of jobs, 10,000 jobs. Well, the next thing you know, 100,000 are moving out of the country, and we have 10,000 to replace it. That's just wonderful. But nobody has any money. That's why the mall has no business. That's why stores are closing. Thank you, and have a Thank good you, night. Thank you, Mr. Dobson. Thank you. Anyone else? Contact your congressman and tell him no to trade packs. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. Anyone else care to address council? Thank you. Fifth order, 5A motions. Um, I, I, one faux pas that I made in the beginning, I neglected to ask if any council people had any uh, announcements to make or comments to make prior to the meeting or prior, but uh, hopefully we can do it during, uh, during motions. Mr. Wexler. Thank you, Mr. McGough. Um, as tonight is my, my first meeting, I can't tell you the excitement that I feel of uh, being here and being a part of what I think is going to be a great a turnaround for the city of Scranton. Um, I'd like to thank the people that come to these meetings and take their time to speak. I'd like to thank the people that stay at home and watch the meetings and participate and keep up to date. When we talk about everybody being all in, that includes you. And this forum, I believe, is a welcome place for people to exchange ideas, give comments, but we want to keep it as positive as possible. And that doesn't mean you have to be a cheerleader for the city. Um, but when um, we campaigned, all of us, and we campaigned with the mayor, uh, we made a commitment to have a positive attitude towards the city of Scranton. Uh, we have sat down with each other, and we've sat down with the mayor, and so far we are working towards that. Um, speaking about the Chamber of Commerce. Um, the Chamber of Commerce, it's another example of everybody being all in. To the best of my knowledge, this is the first time that the Chamber has stepped up and wanted to become a participant in the recovery of Scranton. Uh, the money that they are providing has come from donors of the uh, members of the Chamber and it's, and it's welcome. Um, the other thing I'd like to mention is I'd like to congratulate Mayor Courtright. Um, as I'd like to congratulate him also on the selection of his cabinet members. I'm quite impressed by all of them. And the last thing I have is, uh, since we heard tonight about the goodwill, um, I believe that this, as Mr. Mr. Langan said, this is the final step for this project. This is either going to work or it's not going to work. Uh, and it does no one no good for this project not to work. Uh, the people of North Scranton have waited for this for quite a long time, and I'm very excited uh, that this will move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wexler. Councilman Rogan? Yes, thank you. Um, first, an announcement, and then um, a few comments. Um, the University of Scranton and the United Way are once again helping low to moderate income uh, individuals, families, and senior citizens prepare their taxes this year. Um, for anyone whose household income was less than $51,000 for the year of 2013, um, you may be eligible to have your taxes prepared for free. Um, there are a lot of changes to the tax code this year coming up, and uh, I'm sure many of you have seen the commercials on TV from the, the companies that, are, that want to charge you to prepare. Um, it's very expensive, and, and there's a lot of people that are missing a lot of deductions when they, when they uh, do prepare their taxes. Um, so beginning February 2nd, appointments will be available actually all around um, the county and, and the, the other surrounding counties, but for Scranton residents specifically, they could go to the University of Scranton. Um, but you could call now to set up an appointment. And that number is 570-504-0614.
and I'm going to leave this information with our office as well so if anyone has any questions they could give a call and and get this relayed to them it really is a, a great service I talked to a few residents that did take advantage of it last year and it, it really is a help for um, to have your taxes professionally prepared um, next just a couple items that I'd like to to talk about um, January 6th right after our swearing-in meeting um, I had a very lengthy meeting with OEC executive director Linda Abley to go over um, a number of issues one of them being um, the issue we see on the agenda tonight which I'll address later um, but it was a, we had a very productive meeting and um, Ms. Abley did agree that we will be meeting on a monthly basis to go over the inner workings of OECD which is something that I'm very um, very happy about I'm looking forward to that openness in City Hall it's something that we haven't seen in a long time um, additionally she did provide me with many documents some which are can be public some which are not um, and I spoke to OECD attorney Hickey as well and we are going to try to formulate a procedure for dealing with many of these loans that are in default um, whether it be through legal channels or through in-house channels um, it's something that needs to be done there were a lot of bad loans issued over the last decade and the ones that were it's it's a loss to the city and everyone always points to the Molly Branigan's and loan and it's by far the biggest hundreds of thousands of dollars that were really just thrown away and and there's nothing there now so I think by working with business owners who are struggling by working um, to get the deadbeats to pay and ha reorganizing this program um, we could have more money coming in and with a revolving loan account the more money that's coming in the more money there'll be in the city coffers um, for this program specifically to loan to other small businesses um, and as much as people dwell on the bad there are some businesses that are received the loan paid it off and are thriving in the city and that's why the programs are there and, and that's what we hope that in the future it will become um, a place for small businesses who need a little um, extra capital to to create jobs and to to grow in the city so I'm very um, grateful for for that um, looking forward to it there are many challenges as I think everyone stated tonight over the next four years um, but we're certainly up to the task um, regarding the um, North Scranton junior high school project this is a piece of legislation that I'm very happy that we are voting on tonight and hopefully it will pass unanimously this project really is one of two big projects that people in the city have wanted to see um, take place for decades um, the other one being the Scranton lace project two big beautiful buildings um, in the city that have been sitting there vacant for decades um, just rotting away and my mother and her sisters my aunts and uncles they many of them went to North Scranton junior high and they always told stories about walking there from Green Ridge which if you go that way you know it's uphill both ways <laughs> <laughs> and when you drive up Greener Street and you see that building there um, just imagining what it could be and there certainly is um, a demand for low-income senior housing in the city um, I know we get requests all the time from residents trying to get into uh, park gardens um, other properties within the housing authority and there certainly is a demand and another thing that was mentioned in the caucus by Mr. Langan is that the um, amphitheater will be I believe open to the public um, it will be restored and, and brought back to to what it was so I am um, proud to vote for this legislation and as it was explained by attorney Hickey it, it really is only a temporary change as far as um, the city having the first lien position um, we're changing to the second position for the construction period which if things go the way they're planned that should only be a few years and definitely looking forward to groundbreaking next month maybe if it's on time if not a couple more um, and, and see this project finally finally take off so um, that's all for now I probably will have a couple other comments when we get to the voting portion of the meeting thank you thank you councilman Rogan councilman Lasker uh, yes just briefly uh, again I would like to touch on the goodwill project also uh, we had a little caucus this evening a lot more was explained um, I know there's a lot of skepticism because this project has been ongoing for a long time there were a lot of pieces of the puzzle to be put together 
And I think right now we are at the tipping point and, and our legislation is going to be key and, and, and it's only some minor changes, but I think we're going to see some major um, improvements at the top of uh, Greenridge Street uh, starting in February. I'm optimistic. Um, I think the whole, the whole group, Goodwill and everyone involved are very optimistic at this time that this is the final piece of the puzzle and uh, we're ready to move on with this project. It will be a great benefit to the city, specifically North Scranton, and uh, I think all my colleagues are in favor of, of seeing this, this go through at this time. Um, I believe it was uh, Mr. Jackowitz that asked about long-term debt in the city. You know, how, how do we know what we owe, what, what the things are? Well, uh, Monday, I believe, it, I believe it was Monday, yes, we had the, the press conference where uh, Mr. Henry Amoroso was introduced. Uh, he is, he's been involved in many projects. Uh, one of the main projects was helping Newark get out of their financial situation. Um, people question why do we need an outsider, why are we paying someone to come in. You know, you can look at it a lot of different ways. It's good to have an outside view. You know, we're all in this community, all of us have a vested interest, but to have someone with outside eyes that has seen these scenarios before, I think it's a, it's a great advantage to us. It's not costing the taxpayers any money. Um, you know, the way I look at it is if, if a family member, you know, needs major heart surgery, and uh, you know the best surgeons in this area are a little skeptical on some things or they, they just don't have all the answers and a uh, professional from some other area is recommended you know I would take their advice and in this particular case I think this was a great move by by our current mayor and uh, again I I believe all of us on this day is here have, have met uh, this gentleman and we're impressed with his resume, his vision for the future for the city, what he has to say, and uh, you know, I can only see positive <coughs> things ahead. We're gonna get to the bottom line. We're gonna know where we're at with him. And uh, it's gonna give us some basis on, on where to go in the future. But I am very hopeful with a couple of these, you know, these things that have just happened this week alone. <coughs> And I would also like to commend the mayor on his choice of, of cabinet members. I think he's put together a great cabinet. And uh, they've all been very open to us at this point. I hope they continue to be so. And uh, the best of luck to everyone. But more importantly, the best of luck to you, our taxpayers. I think you will see, see a difference uh, with the cooperation and the openness that's going on. And uh, that's all I have to say at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Lasker. Councilman Gar. Yes, thank you. I'd like to thank everybody um, for being here tonight. Um, I'd like to thank my family for all their help during the election. It's an honor to be sitting up here today as a city councilman. And I realize Mr. Morgan mentioned, along with some of the other council speakers, the daunting task that lies ahead of us. But I'd just like everybody to know that we will do our best and we will work as hard as possible for the city. Um, I do have a few items that I'd like to bring up. Um, we did receive correspondence from a gentleman up in the Kane Street area in South Scranton about the condition of Kane Street. Um, it is in deplorable condition, and I don't, did anybody else look at that letter from Kane Street? So um, I will be following up with the uh, new director of the DPW on that, just so that gentleman knows. Um, I'd like to thank Gerard Hetman for coming tonight and introducing himself. Um, I can't wait to work with you. Um, on the Chamber of Commerce deal, I did not have the chance to meet with Mr. Amoroso yet. Um, I agree with Mr. Wexler that um, I think it is a good thing that the Chamber wants to get involved and help the city. Um, I did have a few questions, one of which was who would be um, donating the $30,000 to uh, Mr. Amoroso? And according to the paper, 
Um, Mr. Durkin, the president of the Chamber of Commerce, is going to disclose that. So I was glad to see that. Um, so I look forward to uh, meeting Mr. Amoroso and uh, hearing what his ideas are and working closely together with him, uh, the mayor and council. Um, on the Goodwill project, uh, basically what it comes down to, according to what we heard in the caucus, is if we vote no on it, um, they lose the money. If we vote yes on it, the project continues, most likely in February. Um, so I will be voting yes on that. Um, other than that, I don't have anything. Thank you. Mr. McGough, I'm sorry. Good, would I, uh, you know, in a spirit of cooperation, uh, as uh, Mr. God mentioned, uh, Mr. Hetman, I'm glad to see Mr. Hetman from the county here. Uh, I also would like to recognize uh, Larry West, who's here from Senator Blake's office. Um, the center government cooperation is going to be beneficial to everyone in this city. So thanks for, for coming tonight, too, Larry. And Mr. West, if you could get your boss to support Senate Bill 76, we'd certainly appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just a few brief comments. Um, first of all, the, the idea of cooperation, I, I think the first 10 days of this administration has seen enormous cooperation among all parties involved. Uh, I, I think this is a cooperation that we've been looking for, and I hope that the momentum that it has continues throughout the year and um, even becomes uh, a greater. Uh, we are trying to foster greater communication. As Mr. Rogan mentioned, he's already reached out to Mrs. Abley and setting up a, uh, an open line of communication. We have encouraged all the members of council to uh, open lines of communication with the cabinet heads that are related to their particular committees. Uh, and hopefully that we can work on a uh, kind of face-to-face -face basis with these people so that things can get done in a more timely fashion, in a more cooperative fashion. I think that is something that we are looking forward to. I think that is something that you should look forward to. Uh, the other piece of cooperation that has been mentioned uh, between the Chamber of Commerce and the city, uh, a great positive partnership. This is something that should exist. The Chamber of Commerce should act in the interest of the city, and the city should act in the interest of the Chamber of Commerce. It should be a symbiotic relationship. And hopefully this is a first step. And I thank Mr. Durkin for reaching out and, and for creating this um, first step. Uh, I, I think this is uh, something, again, that's going to be very positive for the city. And the selection or the hiring of a consultant, I don't think expert help is ever a bad idea. Um, I know Mayor Courtright promised during his campaign that he would seek out kind of the best and the brightest uh, to, to help solve the problems of the city of Scranton. And I think this is a, a great step towards doing that, um, especially when it comes at no cost to the city. Um, this is something that, uh, again, is something that we look forward to and um, hopefully start to see some, some progress and some results from it. And uh, people have, been, have mentioned uh, that we had a caucus beforehand. I should have uh, mentioned this prior. We, we are reinstituting um, the caucus of council uh, at 6 o'clock prior to every meeting. The purpose of this, of these, of this caucus, I'm not sure what the plural of caucus would be, so I'm trying to avoid it. Um, <laughs> is basically informational and organizational. They are open to the public. Uh, we do meet back in the clerk's office, and, and the purpose of them is so that we as a council can sit down, look at the agenda, uh, get information that we may need, and, and talk about the procedures that we will be, you know, what will happen during the you know, process of the meeting. Um, people are, as I said, the public is welcome to attend, um, realize that it is a small room, and, but it is basically informational 
and organizational. If there is something that is of major import, um, we will move out to council chambers for the caucus, uh, as has been done in the past. But they will be held every evening at six, or every council, uh, prior to every council meeting at six o'clock. And that is all. Thank you very much. Five B, amending file of the council number six, 1976, entitled an ordinance as amended, imposing a tax for general revenue purposes on the transfer of real property situate within the city of Scranton, prescribing and regulating the method of evidencing the payment of such tax, conferring powers and imposing duties upon certain persons, and providing penalties by imposing the rate of the reality transfer tax at two and nine tenths percent for calendar year 2014. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. I'm a question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5C, amending file of the council number 7, 1976, entitled an ordinance as amended imposing a mercantile license tax of two mills for the year 1976 and annually thereafter upon persons engaging in certain occupations and businesses therein providing for its levy and collection and for the issuance of mercantile licenses conferring and imposing powers and duties upon the tax collector of the city of Scranton and imposing penalties by imposing the mercantile license tax at one mill for calendar year 2014. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5D, amending file of the council number 8, 1976 entitled an ordinance as amended providing for the general revenue by imposing a tax at the rate of two mills upon the privilege of operating or conducting business in the city of scranton as measured by the gross receipts therefrom requiring registration and payment of the tax as condition to the conducting of such business providing for the levy and collection of such tax prescribing such requirements for returns and records conferring powers and duties upon the tax collector and imposing penalties by imposing the business privilege tax at the rate of one mill for the calendar year 2014. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5E, amending file of the council number 100, 1976, entitled an ordinance as amended, levying general and special taxes for the fiscal year 1977 by setting the millage for the year 2014. I'll, at this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5E be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5F, amending file of the council number 17, 1994, entitled an ordinance as amended, authorizing the governing body of the city of Scranton to enact a waste disposal and collection fee for the purpose of raising revenue to cover the waste disposal and collection costs incurred by the city of Scranton for the disposal of refuse by imposing a waste disposal and collection fee of $300 for calendar year 2014. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5F be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5G, amending file of the council number 145 of 2007, entitled an ordinance renaming the emergency and municipal services tax emst to local service tax lst and by imposing a withholding of 52 dollars for the calendar year 2014. 
At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5G be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5H, amending file of the council number 17, 2012, as amended, entitled Establishing a Registration Program for Residential Rental Properties, requiring all owners of residential rental properties to designate an agent for service of process and prescribing duties of owners, agents, and occupants, directing the designation of agents, establishing fees for the costs associated with the registration of rental property, and prescribing penalties for violations by amending section nine fees to include the increase in the annual rental registration fee to $50 per unit and the annual permit fee to $150 per site. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5H be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5I, appointment of Linda Abley, 906 Skyview Drive, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, to the position of Executive Director of the Office of Economic and Community <laughs> Development, effective January 6, 2014. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5I be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5J, appointment of Carl Graziano, 418 Wilbur Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18508, to the position of police chief, effective January 6, 2014. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5J be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5K, appointment of Frank Switnicki, 2900 Pittston Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, to the position of IT manager, effective January 6, 2014. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5K be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5L, appointment of Wayne Beck, 105 Yesu Drive, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, to the position of city treasurer, effective January 6, 2014, to replace Christopher Boland. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5L be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. <coughs> All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so move. 5M, appointment of Patrick Hinton, 319 Prospect Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, to the position of Director of the Department of Licensing, Inspections and Permits, effective January 6, 2014, to replace Mark Seitzinger. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5M be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5N, appointment of Eugene Hickey, Esquire, 20 Ridgeview Drive, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, to the position of General Counsel to the Office of Economic and Community Development, effective January 6, 2014, to replace Michael O'Brien, Esquire. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5N be placed into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5-0, -oh, appointment of Dennis Gallagher, 311 Patterson Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, <coughs> to the position of Director of the Department of Public Works, effective January 6, 2014, to replace Mark Dewar. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5-0 -oh be placed into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. <coughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 
5P, appointment of Patrick DeSarno, 606 Hampton Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, to the position of Acting Fire Chief, effective January 6, 2014, to replace Thomas Davis. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5P be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. Yes, just on the question. Um, I didn't realize that it said acting here until Mrs. Schumacher had brought that up. Um, I don't want to table it, but just out of curiosity, maybe we can ask the administration why that is, why it says acting and then just not the fight, fire chief? We will. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5Q, appointment of David Balzoni, 2187 Port Royal Road, Clark Summit, Pennsylvania, 18411, to the position of business administrator, effective January 6, 2014, to replace Gina McAndrew. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5Q be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Eyes have it and so move. 5R, appointment of Rebecca McMullen, 1101 Grandview Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18509, to the position of Director of Human Resources, effective January 6, 2014, to replace Stephanie Davis. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5R be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye ha ayes have it and so moved. 5S, appointment of Jason A. Shrive, Esquire, 1803 Academy Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, to the position of city solicitor, effective January 6, 2014, to replace Paul Kelly, Esquire. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5S be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5T, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to enter into a leasehold mortgage, an amended mortgage assumption agreement, a release of a previously recorded mortgage, an intercreditor agreement, and any and all other documents necessary to further the construction of approximately 58 elderly rental units in the former North Scranton Junior High School building. Emergency certificate attached. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5T be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. Um, I, I just have, I didn't say anything before about this particular piece of legislation. Uh, I, I think one important thing is to make note that if, if we didn't approve this, that all of the all of the money for the construction of that project would be in jeopardy, uh, including $700,000 that came through OECD that potentially HUD could ask for a return of that money. So putting this off and not approving it could ultimately cost the city $700,000. Uh, it, I think it's a much better idea to move ahead with the project and, and get it done, um, even though we may be changing it somewhat, but I think it's a positive, a positive step towards the completion of this project. Anyone else? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. I make a motion to, disp to suspend the rules and move item 5T to seventh order to be considered for final passage based on the attached emergency certificate. Second. On the question. Uh, we were a little bit hesitant to, to have an emergency certificate first meeting, but um, as was explained, this was something that was kind of put in the lap of the new administration, and since we haven't met really since December, um, it became a timely issue, and thus the idea of an emergency certificate for this. 
All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, no business at this time. Uh, since this was moved to seventh order, I would ask if there is anyone who wishes to address council on item 5T, uh, the, the emergency certificate legislation that has been moved to seventh order. Yeah, Bill Jackwitz. Uh, not wanting to be a doubting Thomas, uh, what happens if it doesn't work? I, if, if the past repeats itself and the project doesn't get started, doesn't get completed, we have all this taxpayer's money already invested into it, which I understand and I do not want to lose this. I also understand why you're going to approve it tonight. And I'm in favor of that. But my question is, if it doesn't work, and I hope it does, will the people who voted for it and accepted it be willing to explain to the people why it did not work? Like I said, I hope it works. We have a lot of taxpayers' money invested in this program already. I think it goes back to like 1993 or 1998 or something like that. I'm not sure on the year, but it's been a long time that we've been looking at that building on the top of Greenwood Street with nothing being done to it. We, I've been here at council meeting after council meeting where people came in here and told us it was going to get done. And guess what? It never got done. And me as a taxpayer and a citizen of Scranton who was born here in Scranton, educated here in Scranton, I'm tired of it. And I know I'm not the only one that feels that was this way. But my question is, let's pray and hope that it works. But what if it doesn't work? What do we do then? Do we borrow more money? Or do we just tear the building down and waste all that money? I guess what I'm asking for from council and from the mayor and the administration is let's make, and pardon my language, damn sure that we're right this time. Mr. Jackwitz, I would... Um, first answer your question um, and this is from not only um, Ms. Abley and Mr. Lang and uh, I think everybody involves f involved feels that if this project doesn't come to be after this legislation and the pending loan with Wells Fargo it's not going to happen um, that being said the reason for the legislation is um, so a loan can be signed for construction um, that's the only reason why this this legislation is happening um, the city taking the second position allows the paperwork to be signed and the loan to be closed on and I, I know attorney Hickey's not here but I believe it's in a week less than a week the loan for the construction will be signed off on and um, I'm, I believe that the number is in tens of millions of dollars of the financing mm -hmm. for the construction and that's a private funding outside of government um, we're not voting on any new borrowing or any um, any grants in in this scenario here could I I'll, I'll further add to that uh, one of the things that was mentioned in the caucus was that in order to have this legislation approved they had to go through HUD and, and HUD actually sent a letter back uh, agreeing a a after speaking with Mrs. Abley and attorney um, Hickey uh, they they received some assurance that this project was moving forward because they too had the same questions that this money has been sitting there for a very long time and HUD wanted assurances that the project was going to move forward and HUD did send a letter to the city that they approved of this legislation and that they were looking forward to it being approved and that the project would move forward um, my name is Joan Hodewanitz and I'm a taxpayer and homeowner uh, mr. Rogan I missed the count the caucus I wasn't aware of it uh, be here next week that's for sure I'm one of those people who went to North Scranton Junior High School now I have a very fond place in my heart for that school however okay 
I mean, it is a project that's dragged on and on and on. Okay, and at a certain point in time, we've got to cut our losses. So what I'd like to know from you, as I was listening to you, without the benefit of what was explained in the caucus, can you tell me um, what day would we know it's a dead project? March 1st, June 1st, July 1st? You, did, you, you said something to the effect that it's either going to happen or it's not. Right. Can you give me a ballpark date when we would know that? Well, I would, and, I, and I'll see if my colleagues agree with me, from the information that was presented to us at caucus, I would say within the next three months. Um, as let's long see, as January 16th, February, March, April 16th. So let's say tax day. Fair enough. Tax and day? Fair enough. So I could come back here and we, you could say to me it's up or it's down. Well, and well, I know we've poured a lot of money into that project, but what are we going to have, a billion dollar apartment complex? I mean, I mean you've got to be realistic. Right. If it can't come together after 10 or 15 years, it's not going to happen. Okay, and maybe there comes a point where you have to cut our losses and focus on other projects. Okay, but you know, you've, you've got to be stewards of our money once we've paid our taxes to the city. And that's what I expect of all of you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Marie Schumacher still. Uh, I understand you're between a rock and a hard place, and I agree that this has to be voted for, but I also agree that we, the taxpayers, have a right to know, particularly those of us who haven't been in SPEC in Scranton for 15 years, uh, have a right to know how much has been invested, how much of our public dollars has been invested. So I would like a commitment from you folks that that will be provided next week. The amount, the year, and what the terms were, if it was a grant, if it was a loan, uh, if it was a loan, if there was any interest rate on it. And I would also like to know, and I apologize because this just dinged on me, I had to go back to get my purse. Uh, uh, who are the principals in this 1530 LL, uh, Main Street LLP? Do you I'm know sure. if you don't if you don't know now I mean you're, you're gonna vote but I would like to know who the principals are in that who is going to be actually leasing it from the goodwill okay commitment thank you thank you thank you Uh, I, I was just looking to see if they were mentioned in the backup, and it's the, the, the 1539 or whatever is, is mentioned, but the, the principals themselves are not the individuals. Maybe, maybe you could get that. Uh, seventh order? Seventh order, 7A, formerly 5T, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for Adoption, Resolution Number 2, 2014 authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to enter into a leasehold mortgage, an amended mortgage assumption agreement, a release of a previously recorded mortgage, an intercreditor agreement, and any and all other documents necessary to further the construction of approximately 58 elderly rental units in the former North Scranton Junior High, S High Building, emergency certificate attached. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Community Development? As chairperson for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Garn? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. And I failed to mention that Attorney Moore was unable to attend the meeting, but he did send a 
replacement attorney. I, I want to thank Attorney Scanlon for um, being present at the meeting this evening. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second.